Good morning, everybody. <laughs> Welcome, you faithful, brave, hearty souls coming out in this weather. I want to welcome each and every one of you to worship. Let us come be warmed and blessed by the Holy Spirit. Let's worship. morning. Will you please stand and join me in the call to worship? You'll find it in the hymnal on page 859. Ellen will play through the music one time, then we'll sing, then we'll do the responsive reading, then we'll sing again. to sing praises to our God. A song of praise is fitting. The Lord builds up Jerusalem and gathers the outcasts of Israel. The Lord heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. The Lord determines the number of the stars and gives to all of them their names. Great is our Lord and abundant in power whose understanding is beyond measure. The Lord lifts up the number 126, Sing Praise to God Who Reigns Above.
Please join me in the opening prayer. We praise you, extraordinary God, for the holiness of ordinary things, a gathering of fellow believers, a song of praise, a prayer of thanksgiving, a word, a loaf of bread, a cup, a fountain of water. Send your spirit to rush cool and clear through our dry and brittle places. May the spirit seep into the cracks and crevices of our hearts that we might know you more fully and worship you more deeply. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated, and we're going to do some special music. Yep, Jordan. And, okay. Standing ovation. That's wonderful. <laughs> Thank you, Jordan. Very brave. Anybody wants to do a solo in worship, just come on down. Well, with that, let's let's stand. Let's do some marching of our own. Let's go and march to the sanctuary to share the peace of Christ with each other.
Our Old Testament lesson today comes from Hosea 11, verses 1 through 8. When Israel was a child, I loved him, and out of Egypt I called my son. But the more I called Israel, the further they went from me. They sacrificed to the Baals, and they burned incest, incense to images. It was I who taught Ephraim to walk, taking them by the arms but they did not realize it was I who healed them. I led them with cords of human kindness, with ties of love. I lifted the yoke from their neck and bent down to feed them. Will they not return to Egypt and will not Assyria rule over them because they refuse to repent? Swords will flash in their cities, will destroy the bars of their gates and put an end to their plans. My people are determined to turn from me. Even if they call to the Most High, he will by no means exalt them. How can I give you up, Ephraim? How can I hand you over Israel? How can I treat you like Adma? How can I make you like Seboim? My heart is changed within me. All my compassion is aroused. Thank you. Our gospel lesson this morning comes from the Gospel of Mark. It is there in your bulletin. I invite you to stand for the reading of our gospel lesson. Hear these words from the first chapter of Mark. As soon as they left the synagogue, they went with James and John to the home of Simon and Andrew. Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they immediately told Jesus about her. So he went to her, took her hand, and helped her up. The fever left her, and she began to wait on them. That evening after sunset, the people brought to Jesus all the sick and demon-possessed. The whole town gathered at the door. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary, solitary place where he prayed. May God add a blessing to our hearing and living out of the word this day. You may be seated. I've given him three chances now three times that he's let me down and i'm not going to be generous anymore i've had it and i don't want to be burned again this was douglas a man usually willing to go a second mile he was known for his good nature his willingness to give a person a chance in this case however he had gone far enough douglas was a carpenter at a small construction business and against his better judgment he hired a man named mike to work for him and Mike was a good worker, but not always dependable. So when Douglas was depending on him for that Monday morning roofing job that just had to get done, Mike never showed up. He had had too much of a weekend, and so after a reprimand, Douglas gave him another chance. But then it happened again, and then it happened again, and then it happened again. It was then that he said to Mike, I've given you so many chances now. That's enough. I'm through giving them to you. I'm sorry, but I'm just going to have to let you go. So this scenario may sound familiar. We may know someone like that in our lives. We may have even experienced some version of this ourselves. When someone takes advantage of us, we may be willing to forgive them once, twice, even three times. But usually there comes a point where we will say, that's enough. I just don't want to go through this again. I've had it with you. It's a feeling of exasperation and disappointment and anger. We bend over backwards to give people a chance and then that person fails to do his or her part. So we all know what it feels like to feel this exasperation, disappointment. But we also see this displayed in scripture, particularly in the Old Testament, through the prophets. The prophets of the Old Testament all began their ministry in the kingdom of Israel, once united under King David and Solomon, but now split into two kingdoms, one in the north, called Israel or Ephraim, and the southern kingdom of Judah. And these prophets, all very faithful, arose not just to talk about the futures, which is what we often think of prophets, but instead they expressed what would happen if current circumstances didn't change, if different choices were not made. These prophets expressed the frustration, the disappointment, the regret that God had with his people who are acting as undependable as Mike was, the people who were turning away, failing to do their part, turning from justice and mercy, turning to gods of their own creation. And so today we hear from the prophet Hosea, who lived in that northern kingdom. 
the northern kingdom of Israel that had grown way too comfortable thinking that the Assyrian Empire would never attack, thinking there was nothing wrong with worshiping other gods, thinking they can act however they want and continue to ignore and exploit the weakest members of their society. And while the people think that they are on, on top with no worries, they just don't get the fact that in reality, they are very lost and broken. By turning away, they put themselves on a path to self-destruction. As Hosea describes it, he says, there is no faithfulness or loyalty, and no knowledge of God in the land, swearing, lying, and murder, stealing, adultery, break out, bloodshed follows bloodshed, all the land mourns, and all who live in it languish. Into this situation in the 8th century BC comes the prophet Hosea, son of Bari, as he began to preach the word of God. And God wanted the people to see their own unfaithfulness lived out in real life, lived out in Hosea's life in particular. So God tells Hosea an interesting command. He says to Hosea, take to yourself an adulterous wife and children of unfaithfulness, because the land is guilty of the vilest adultery in departing from the Lord. Hosea went and married Gomer, knowing she would never be faithful to him, and that she had three children by different men. And even, though, and, even, and even though Hosea knew what he was getting into, he was still deeply hurt. Hosea truly loved Gomer. It was heartbreaking as he cared for their bewildered children who cried nightly for their mother. The prophet's brokenness over his wife's unfaithfulness was a picture to the people of a faithful God heartbroken, over the unfaithfulness of the people. And even though Hosea is devastated, God says to him, go, show your love to your wife again. Though she is loved by another and is an adulteress, love her as the Lord loves the Israelites, though they turn to other gods and love the sacred raisin cakes. Just as Hosea remained faithful, loving his wife, who doesn't deserve it for what she's done, the point is made clear so too does God remain faithful, loving us in spite of the ways that we hurt each other, loving us in spite of the choices that we make that hurt ourselves or others. As Hosea restores his marriage relationship, so too does God seek to restore his relationship with us and with all his people and all of his children. For the message of Hosea is that God never gives up on us. We may turn from God, but God never turns away from us. We may bow down and worship false gods of our own creation that suck our time and our energy, that distract us and lead us away on the path of faith, but God always remains faithful to us. We may suffer through broken relationships with one another, but God always works to restore relationships with him and with other people. God continually seeks us out to love us and restore us and give us hope. In the early 2000s, in Armenia, there was a deadly, devastating earthquake that's killed thousands of people. A distressed father ran frantically through the streets to the school where his son was, remembering what he had said to him. He said, no matter what, Armand, I'll always be there for you. So his heart sank when he turned the corner and he saw the school that he was running towards in rubble and he darts towards the east corner where he knew his son's classroom would be and starts digging with his bare hands. And one of the bystanders says, you know, you've got to stop. They're obviously dead by looking at this rubble. And he says, you can either criticize me or lift one of these bricks. So a few pitched in for a time, but the man kept digging and digging and digging and digging until he heard a muffled groan. And he pulled the board back and he cried, Armand, for the darkness, for out of the darkness came a slight shaking voice that quivered and cried, Papa? And that day they found 14 of the 33 students alive. So when Armand emerged with his friends, he turned to them and he said, do you see what I told you? I told you that my father would never forget about us. That is the love expressed through the prophet Hosea. As we heard, I led them with cords of human kindness, with bands of love, I was to them like those who lift infants to their cheek. I bent down to them and fed them. How can I give up? How can I hand you over? 
My heart is changed within me, and my compassion is aroused. The Lord speaks as our parent whose heart says, These are still my children. No matter what, I cannot and will not disown them. God always gives a second and a third and a hundredth and a two hundredth chance and never forgets us. I remember reading this story recently about a woman who had twin boys, but who had entirely different personalities. One was the kind of boy who enjoyed scouts and paper routes and did well in school and was elected to the student council in high school, went to college, studied law. The other son was rebellious, always getting into trouble, being called into the principal's office. He quit school, was, was picked up by the police several times, and was finally arrested on felony charges. By strange coincidence, the day of her son, of, of one of her sons was to receive his degree was the same day that the other son was to receive his sentence for his crime. The mother went to the graduation ceremony, but while she was there, proud of the accomplishments of her son, her heart was in another place, in a courtroom, grieving for the son who just couldn't stay out of trouble. Does a mother forget her son because of what he's done? Would you? Does the Lord give up on us because of what we have done? And the answer is no. And that's the good news for us this day. In a world where so many people can feel lonely, who turn to self-destructive habits, who lose their way and think that no one could ever love them, people that may be put in our paths this very week, we need to show and proclaim and live a life where we know that forgiveness is not just possible. For all those who believe the lie that we are supposed to make it on our own, under our own strength, and forget about the larger love of God that surrounds us and calls us and leads us. We need to remember the message of the prophet Hosea, who does call us this day to remember how much God loves us, that God will always reach out to us, hold on to us, and go to whatever lengths to wrap us in, as he says, those bands of love. So with that, I invite you to watch this. This is the story about love. Love that came down from heaven. Love lived with us. Love spoke. Love healed. Love drew crowds. Love changed lives. Love made waves. Love was bold in the face of enemies. Love was true, no matter the cost. And love was faithful. Love prayed, listened, and obeyed. Love knew it had to be done and did it. Love was betrayed and abandoned. Love was silent when wrongly accused. Love was whipped. Love was beaten. Love was tortured and mocked. But love was strong. Love dragged itself to a cross and laid down willingly to be insulted, shamed, nailed, Stabbed, ripped, abandoned, and killed. Love hung from nails as the crowd looked on. And God looked away. Love denied comfort. Love refused rescue. Love courageously did what love had to do. Love sacrificially did what only love could do. Then love took one last breath. And finished. Love gave his life. Love paid our debt. Love saved us all, even when we were not worth saving. That's real That's love. That's real love. That's real love. That's real love. of the prophet Hosea this day is clear. Our faith is always a response to God's limitless compassion and love in our lives. It is God's unending love that gives our faith power and gives it vitality. For we worship a God who never gives up on us, is always reaching out to us, caring for us, wanting us to join in the mission to redeem the world by our acts of justice and mercy, by how we practice acts of forgiveness and live lives of peace. Our God, who is bigger than our cares and our concerns, our illnesses and hurts, 
who passionately loves this world and calls us to never give up. Never give up hope, never give up faith, never give up on sharing and making God's love real. So let us come this morning to renew, recommit our relationship with God. Let us remember how God has moved and is moving in our lives. Let us remember the blessings that we have from God, the beauty of creation for giving us life, the blessings in so many ways, and most of all, for giving us his son, who offers us wholeness and new life. Let us return to God and to the path of hope and love and joy that we are called to walk. Let us come in thankfulness for the wideness of God's mercy and grace, and most of all, for God's love for us. Amen. Let's respond to this love as we stand and as we sing hymn number 121. There's a wideness in God's mercy. I'm going to invite you to lift up the joys, the concerns, the prayers you have. Our, uh, invite our ushers to come give you a mic so we can hear you. And so I want to invite you this day. What are your joys, your concerns, your prayers? So right down here with Marilyn. We'll start with her. The flowers on the altar are for our grandson who turned 11. We had a conversation with him. We are, he's in Cleveland, so it's a long way from us. He is such a bright young man, so full of enthusiasm and fun. So we thank the Lord for him. All right. Amen. Oh. <laughs> I have a kisson. I hope my sister gets better from the flu and the strep throat. Okay. So Brania is homesick. Not just with the flu, but the flu and strep throat. But it sure is good to see you, Jordan. <laughs> I, I would invite your prayers for Michelle and our son John as they're on their way back from Columbus after celebrating Michelle's dad's 96th birthday yesterday. So they're driving back on snowy roads, so keep them in your prayers. Thanks. All right. And Elma. <laughs> <laughs> as she is wont to be, which was great, and Jean and uh, Ross came, and Shirley came. But we had close to 60 people, and we were told, yay, please come again, because we like the music that you did. Um, and I'm announcing that we have a 
second gig coming up in April at Sarah Chednell's Ovation. And she's already talked about the essential style of music that we're gonna do. Oh, we're gonna have to book you again. And I have a request to miss St. Camilla. So we're on our way on the road. <laughs> 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 so for Elna and Bill, this great musical duo, <laughs> taking the world by storm. I said to Elna, it's only a matter of time before the recording contracts pour in. And <laughs> you know, Any other prayers this morning, other joys of your heart or concerns that you have? You have another one, George? Oh, she has another one. All right. <laughs> I have a joy because Sadie, today is Sadie's birthday. Sadie's birthday? Yeah. But you got to tell us who Sadie is. Sadie came here like last week. Oh, Sadie, Sadie Callio. Okay, yeah, okay. It's her birthday. It's her birthday. All right, well, happy birthday to Sadie. She couldn't join us today, so. I have a couple of joys, and we all should. This is a beautiful church. We have a beautiful um, yard surrounding this church. And this morning, as, as John and I were talking, standing at the window, looked out, and there is an absolutely healthy, beautiful coyote running through our woods. It stopped, came over, looked at the church, and went back into the woods. <laughs> but it was absolutely beautiful. The other real joy that I have is this week I talked to my brother-in-law in Massachusetts um, who goes to see my sister Audrey every single day. Audrey has, is in the last stages of Alzheimer's and has not known any of us by name uh, and has not been able to string any words together for well over a year now. And this week, she sat and stared intently at my brother-in-law and all of a sudden said, I can tell you one thing. That whole sentence strung together about knocked David off his seat. And then he laughed at her and said, and what can you tell me? And she said, I love you. That is a moment of clarity and absolutely beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Other prayers, other joys, other concerns. Well, I invite you to keep those on our prayer chain and our hearts at home, those serving our nation in your thoughts and in your prayers. Fill out the cards that you have if you'd like to be on the prayer chain so we can pray with you and for you. But let us come as a community, as the body of Christ. Let us come and be in prayer. Let's pray. Oh God, we uh, gather this morning bound together by your bands of love, your great and gracious love that flows around us and through us, um, that love that nourishes us this morning, that inspires us to acts of even deeper and, and greater service in your name. Oh Lord, we pray for those bands of love to flow around those this morning that we hold in prayer, for those who maybe we're a little worried about uh, with their health, we pray for your healing presence to be with them, for family members and friends that we may be on our hearts and our minds this morning. We pray that they feel your love and grace and hope as they feel ours this morning. Oh Lord, for those who may find themselves out in the cold and, and the snow this day um, with no homes or, or with shelter or very limited options or worried about that, we pray, oh Lord, that they Feel your love through those who with compassion and with care reach out, sharing and extending your love and making it real in our world. Oh Lord, we lift up to you these prayers of concern that we, that we may have for ourselves, for neighbors, for the world, ever mindful of the, the blessings of your great love for us, blessings of birthdays and, and of celebrations in our lives, um, we are truly thankful. The blessings of family and friends that are with us, for our church family that prays for us, and for your Son, who was love incarnate, love made real, to demonstrate the fullest extent of just how much you are never going to give up on us and this world. No matter how lost we may feel in grief, or in loneliness, or in depression, or hurt, or heartache, 
or pain or sorrow or whatever else, to know that you are there, reaching for us each and every day to lift us up and send us out to share that love with the world. Oh Lord, we come with these prayers. But there are others on our hearts, so we pause just for a moment, just to let your Holy Spirit speak to us, touch us, and nudge us in this time of silent prayer. Oh, Lord, all these prayers, silent and spoken, we lift to you in the name of that one who has come and who has walked in our shoes, who knows our hurts and pains, and who loves us to the very end and beyond. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. All right. You sharing our faith? Um, remember that the parish nurses, they're going to do blood pressure checks today down in Fellowship Hall, so go down and visit them. Um, there's not many of us here today, so I'm sure they'd love to see all of you. <laughs> That'd be great. No choir rehearsals tonight. No, no music here at the church. So, uh, Lunch Bunch every Tuesday. We're doing a study on Romans, uh, the letter that changed the world. And Tai Chi on Monday and Friday at 11th down in Fellowship Hall. And also our flower chart. There's a few more spots, so let's get it completely filled. And then also Ash Wednesday's coming up on uh, Valentine's Day, February 14th. So we're going to do our traditional pancake supper at 615. And then our worship service up here um, in the sanctuary with our imposition of ashes. So you are invited to come to that. Also, we're going to be doing our care packages to college students. So what we want to do is if you have a college student, know of a college student that would love a care package from the church, from their church family, just uh, send the names to the church office. The email's there um, by Tuesday, February 20th. And then we'll take care of that. So be a part of this great mission that we do to let our youth know we love them. This week is the women's prayer breakfast. The weeks are a little split. Men was on Thursday. Women get their chance this Wednesday. So I invite you to come. It's a great way to start the month with our devotion and um, our simple breakfast. And then we have uh, communion together. So that's at 7. Also, uh, our host week for Family Promise is coming up on the 18th to the 25th. Um, so a bit of news about that. Um, family Promise, um, Ann and Jack, who are going to come to stay with us and this week, they were with us in November, they found a home. That's sort of the purpose of Family Promise, right? So I'm pleased to announce that there's currently no one in the program. However, that changes at a moment's notice. <laughs> we can go from no families to four families in a heartbeat. So what we'd like to do is it's better to be prepared than not. So I would really want to invite you to go out. The board is in the narthex and take a look at how you could be involved in this ministry, either to help set up or take down, do a meal, be an overnight host, and then a big thank you. to The other news is that we're working with another congregation in Fiendsville Grace Lutheran Church to have them be a support congregation. And um, they've kind of committed to helping us with meals this time around. So we're hoping to have them come on board and help us in even greater ways so they can support us. So I think that's exciting to have this uh, renewed relationship with Grace Lutheran. We've, we've had a relationship with them, but uh, we're sort of renewing it is what we're doing. So come be a part of this ministry. Um, I invite you to look through the rest of the bulletin, other announcements that are here for the life of our community. And Marilyn has one. Yeah, so next Sunday, special Sunday, it's going to be our, our Boy Scout Sunday slash Diversity Sunday. So our Boy Scout troop that we sponsor will be here. They're going to help us with the service. A couple boys are going to talk um, about their experiences here at the church camping. And then we're going to have uh, one of the executive directors of Pathfinders, which is a group that works with teens and youth on the streets of Milwaukee, will be our speaker, our featured speaker that day. And um, hopefully that's in here somewhere. But we're also collecting... Uh, like pudding packs and other different things to give to Pathfinders to hand out to kids. So, so that's, that's coming up. Well, maybe I'll send out an email this week with what we're doing, and maybe you want to be a part of that mission um, to help Pathfinders. So anything else, Marilyn, to add? That's it. All right. All right. So read through the rest of the bulletin. Reflections book group is also this week. We want to mention that. 
at 7, so come be a part of that. So, with that, let us come with open hands and hearts to share of our tremendous blessings that God has given to us. I want to invite our ushers to come forward to collect our morning offering, and Elna and Ellen for another wonderful duet. Let us pray. O oh God, for all of the blessings of our hearts and our lives, we come and we are so truly thankful as we this day give back to you. As we give back to you in the name of your love that we know you give to us so graciously and so abundantly without limit. So Lord, may these gifts be just that, our own bands of love to wrap this world and other people's lives in so that they know of your care, of your concern, of your hope, of your grace, and of your peace. In Christ's name, amen. You may be seated. As we come this day to celebrate the love of God, we come to share in communion. To prepare our hearts, I invite us to join in the creed, to center us in our faith. Join me in reading the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. 
He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. So let us come in prayer as we give thanks for our elements. Almighty God, from the rising of the sun to its setting, your presence is with all your people of this, your world. Out of your love for our world, you came. You dwelt among us as one of us, taking the hard path to bring good news to the poor, to feed the hungry, to heal the sick, to share the table with all your people who were welcome, teaching the way that leads to an abundant eternal life. By your incarnation, life, suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from sin, and made a new covenant with us by water and the Spirit. When the time arrived for Jesus to give himself up for us, when all had been prepared, he came to share a last meal with his friends. The Lord took the loaf, blessed it in their midst, broke it, giving it to them and saying, when you eat the bread, Remember me, this is my body, giving for you, that you may be my body, my hands and my feet, and my heart shown to the world. When the supper was finished, he took the one cup, he blessed it and gave it to them, saying, Drink of this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins, that you may know new life. Almighty God, now as we gather at this table, we come to eat bread, to drink the cup, and we remember the one who died to bring us life. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ that we may be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, we come to be nourished and led once again by the Spirit as we join in that prayer that shapes us and forms us as we pray together as the body of Christ. Our Father, who art in heaven, Bite those up <laughs> who want to come, who are going to help me serve communion. So this table is open and all are welcomed um, and I invite you to come up. You may come up, take the bread and eat it, take the juice and drink it, put the empty cup in the plate and coming up the aisle is my chips for those who have trouble with bread. <laughs> for those who may have allergies to bread or that, I'm just see. Thank you, Audra. <laughs> you know, it's great after 14 years of marriage, all I had to do was move my lips and she knew what I needed. How's that for love? How's that for love, folks? <laughs> our own language. This table is set and it is prepared. This table is a table of love, the love of Christ that is poured out to us. And this is our symbol of the length, the depth, the breadth of how much God is going to love us and care for us that we may share it with the world. I invite you to come to be nourished, to be refreshed, to be renewed and recommitted in your relationship with Christ. Come and eat. The table is ready.
I invite you to stand for our prayer and remain standing as we sing our closing hymn this morning. So let's pray. O oh Lord, we do give you thanks and praise for this time to come, to be renewed and reminded of just how much you love us through this act of communion as we come to be one with each other and one with you, as we gather at this table where all are welcomed, all are received, and all are sent out into a great and glorious mission to share, to be your love with this, your world. May we be renewed this morning in that way. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's join in our closing hymn from the worship and song hymnal, our green hymnal, in Christ Alone, 3105. So in and by and through the power of Christ, let us go, wrapped in those bands of love, to go forward in hope and grace and in peace. As we sing to close our service, go in the peace of God. Mm -hmm.